we could go for fine grained locking. And in particular, we could lock only two consecutive elements of the list. Why? Because if you look closely at the sequential code of the list base set, we would observe that all conflicts, well, potential conflicts among operations, they only concern two consecutive elements of the list. That's why we could uh, simply protect them on the way we traverse the list. So each time we traverse, we make, make sure that we only keep lock on the current node and its predecessor until we reach the point where we can actually start modifying the list. So for example, if we have come back to this example of uh, two concurrent inserts, so whenever the uh, add three reaches the, um, the node storing five, it will have it locked together with its predecessor. In this way, it could create a new node storing three and pointing to five, and then it would redirect the next pointer of node storing one to three, without being, being afraid that the concurrent operation add two would modify one and bring the system to, to losing the element storing three. So this way, the concurrent operation add two, we have to wait until the lock on one is released. And when it is released, the uh, node one is already storing the right pointer three, and not five. We notice that the progress guarantees of the resulting fine-grained locking implementation are inherited by the progress guarantees of the locks they use. For example, if the locks are starvation free meaning that if uh, no process holds the acquired lock forever, every process who tries to get the lock would eventually succeed, the implementation would also be starvation free meaning that every operation eventually completes in, in a finite number of its own steps, assuming that no other operation would keep the locks acquired forever. And this is the case with our implementation. However, there is still one problem, an issue, that uh, even operations that uh, do not conflict, they do not concurrently update the same nodes in the list, they may still block each other. For example, in the case when uh, operation add 3 still keeps the logs on uh, nodes 1 and 5, no operation that deals with uh, nodes later in the list be able to succeed. For example, operation uh, add 9, which would potentially only modify node store, the node storing 7, would have to wait until add 3 completes, even though there is no direct conflict. So that is why we may think of, a, of an optimistic approach. So the one possibly negative feature of this hand-over-hand -hand approach is that uh, operations concerning disjoint sets of nodes still block each other thus uh, decreasing the concurrency property of the uh, properties of the resulting implementation. That is why people started thinking about optimistic approach. So in the optimistic approach, you would avoid using locks on traversal. So you traverse the list without locks. And then when the uh, area of the list which interests us is found, we would validate. So I will explain what validation is at the end. We will validate to check if the nodes are still reachable the nodes which are subject to modification or to, uh, to the response of the operation. So for example, if you look at the uh, scenario depicted in the figure, we have an add 9 operation which may traverse the list without looking whether the uh, uh, nodes storing 1 and 5 are locked. In this particular case, they are locked, but uh, the operation add 9 doesn't notice. And finally, it reaches the uh, part of the list which interests it. In particular, it, it reaches the node 7, which is subject to modification if you want to add a new uh, node storing 9. And uh, then it tries to lock it. So let's suppose the, that the lock operation succeeds. So this uh, operation 9 is not, uh, 9 is not waiting anymore. And uh, well, in principle, we could already add a new element 9 here. So if suppose we proceed, very optimistic, and we proceed in element 9 by updating the next pointer of element 7. But this may lead to a problem if we have a concurrent modification of the list. For example, we have a concurrent remove operation, which, for example, removes 7. So since add only protects 7 with the lock, the remove operation would simply redirect the next pointer of 5 pointed to the tail node, thus making the uh, update of operation add 9 useless. So the, uh, the modification of the list is not going to be noticed by subsequent operations. That is why the uh, that is why before introducing modifications on the list, add nine operation the operation add nine should uh, first retraverse the list again and check whether the node it is it is about to modify is still reachable from the head. And in principle, given that the maybe uh, the 
concurrency, concurrent operations may still be uh, in place. The validation should this procedure of uh, finding a node uh, to be modified and validating if it's still reachable should proceed until succeeds. It can, it can go arbitrarily long in the presence of ongoing operations, which means that operations are, well, at best, deadlock free. They cannot be starvation free. Why? Because one particular thread, which introduces infinitely many updates, removes and, uh, and adds to the list, may block every other operations arbitrarily long. Another problem with this algorithm is that even contains operation is blocking. So even operations which, in principle, are not going to modify the content of the list or content of the set, they still acquire locks, which is expensive, and they can be abstracted by concurrent updates, and uh, which, even worse, they can be abstracted by uh, other contains operations. Uh, and uh, it is a common belief that the uh, typical workload on the list-based set contains operations are the most common ones, so this creates unnecessary conflict. Instead, we could go for an even a more relaxed approach, which we call lazy. Another negative point is that uh, update, or even every operation, not necessarily update, traverse the list twice, even without contention. So even if there's no contending update, an add or an, a remove operation would have to traverse the list twice, first to find the uh, node to be modified and then to validate it if it's still reachable, which is costly. To fix all this, we may resort to an even more relaxed, lazy approach. So we not only lock only elements which we are uh, interested in modifying, but also instead of um, physically removing nodes directly on update, we would make, simply mark them deleted and then, then let the subsequent update operations to to perform the physical removals. So in lazy approach, so uh, an update operation would only mark nodes they modify for deletion, but without physically removing them from the list, without rendering them unreachable, and instead physically remove on traverse. So what are the benefits of this approach? So first of all, we can traverse the list weight free, and in particular, the contains operation that doesn't modify the list but only traverses the list becomes now weight free. Weight free here means that uh, it doesn't use any locks and uh, any operation in any execution would be, well, any contains operation in any execution would be able to complete in a finite number of its own steps regardless of the behavior of other processes. But even if other operations would block forever and acquire some locks and would never release it, the contains operation would be always be able to complete without waiting for the others. And the second benefit is that update in the absence of contention, so updates traverse the list only once, if there's no contention. It turns out that this uh, approach introduced by uh, Heller and others in 2009, uh, 2010 has a lot of performance advantages over hand-over-hand -hand locking or, and of course, over coarse grain synchronization. So what, what this marking notes for logical deletion actually means? It means that in every node in the list, we now maintain a field for the value, a field for the uh, bit of logical deletion, and the next pointer. And originally, the logical deletion bit is unset for all elements with the, that appear in the list. In this case, if we have a situation where we have uh, three elements in the list, one, five, and seven, and they, uh, and, and they remove seven operation, we we'll traverse the list and find that the, uh, the node one and five need to be updated, we would first protect the two elements with a lock, but it wouldn't have to retraverse the list to find the, uh, to make sure that the uh, nodes are still reachable. Instead, it would just check, after pr protecting it with, uh, the two elements with locks, would check that the uh, element storing one is still pointing to five, because otherwise it, uh, the concurrent, meanwhile concurrent operation would change the next pointer of one, it could render the uh, remove operation uh, useless. <sighs> I made so many mistakes. I actually meant removing five. So in this case, uh, in this case, it would simply set the logical deletion mark of five to one and return. It would return true because the uh, the remove operation would succeed. And then a, sub a subsequent, for example, remove seven operation. Well, before, of course, before returning, it would release the lock on both node one and node five, and then it would let a subsequent update operation to perform a physical removal. For example, if I have an operation removes 7, I could simply traverse the list until find that the, uh, there is a node on the, on the path which is uh, 
logically but not physically removed, meaning that it's still reachable from the head but it's logically deleted, the remove 7 would be able to re remove it physically, redirect node 1 to the subsequent node storing 7. And only after that it would protect these two nodes with locks and uh, modify the next pointer of 1 to point it to the tail. So now we have uh, a lazy synchronization mechanism which renders updates to be deadlock free and uh, contains wait free. Updates are only deadlock free uh, actually for the same reason because uh, before uh, completing an update we need to physically remove all nodes which were marked for logical deletion and that may take forever because uh, we are in the presence of concurrent uh, updates. So at least one update is guaranteed to complete uh, assuming that no update holds the locks forever. But contains are proceed without acquiring locks and without caring for locks, so they, they would be able to complete wait free. One may say that it's it's still not great because uh, we still use locks. What does it mean using locks? In practice, it means that we still subject to two major problems. Well, maybe three, but uh, the third one I will uh, mention later. The first one is that a thread or a process with uh, lower priority may be preempted from using the uh, system resources while holding a lock. And if we, in this way, uh, a higher priority thread would have to wait until the lock is re uh, released, but the uh, the only thread which may release the lock is, uh, is preempted. So this is what we call a priority inversion. And the related problem is that uh, if, uh, if a thread holding a lock is descheduled, we have so-called convoying, meaning that uh, we need to still go through all, give slots to all other threads before we actually may do any useful work. So this, uh, this is uh, inherent to using locks. And uh, the question is whether we can uh, find uh, a non-blocking solution. And well, one, one, one may say that it's uh, it's straightforward. We simply use a hard synchronization primitive, uh, for example, compare and set, for uh, updating the next field. Well, this way we uh, proceed the same way as in the, in the lazy algorithm. We first uh, mark the node for logical deletion, and then we use CAS for updating the next field. Well, it's not that easy, because uh, while well, in the, in the interval between checking the state of the uh, node, well, for instance, if you find it uh, not logically deleted, and updating uh, its next field using CAS, we may still uh, have some uh, concurrent update which uh, logically delete the node and uh, renders your update in, uh, useless. For example, if we have uh, the following situation, suppose we want to remove 5. So we, we have... Uh, Operation, which is now wait free, so it doesn't acquire any locks, it traverses the list, ignoring locks, ignoring uh, every, uh, well, ignoring locks, and finds element uh, storing one, uh, which points out to five, so that which means that uh, the next pointer of uh, one should be updated. So in some sense, compare and swap helps us because in this case, if uh, another operation, for example, wants to remove five, uh, at least one of them uh, would fail because the compare and swap would fail on the. Uh, modifying next. However, we may still have uh, a concurrent operation, for example, remove 1, which actually after the logical deletion mark by remove 5 was checked on node 1, would set it to 1, meaning that it would mar logically mark it as deleted, and would then use compare and swap on the head to physically remove it, and then we can may schedule a compare and swap of remove 5 to physically remove 5, but now it's, uh, but now it's completely useless because node 1 is not in list anymore. So this way the remove 5 operation wouldn't, wouldn't take effect. So what is the solution? The solution is to update the mark field and the next field in one atomic step. It may be challenging in some environments, but uh, for example in Java, the standard solution is to use uh, a mechanism which is called atomic markable reference. It allows to uh, use a compare and swap operation on a bit and a reference. So in our case, the reference is the next pointer, and the bit is the mark uh, showing the logical deletion property of the node. So this is uh, this is a standard Java mechanism. Well, in uh, in other programming languages like C, C++, you can use uh, they call uh, bit stealing. The resulting algorithm in which you first traverse the list, and then your uh, atomic atomic at in one atomic step verify that the uh, logical deletion mark of the node you want to modify is uh, not set and modify its next next field uh, is uh, coming from uh, Michael and which 
in some sense based on the algorithm previously published by Harris and there's no currently known as a Harris Michael algorithm and it was uh, in the last revision was published in SPAR 2 and it also uh, got into the, uh, some Java uh, concurrency libraries the resulting algorithm is uh, no blocking or sometimes called lock free for updates meaning that uh, you know, under all circumstances at least one update operation would be able to succeed to, to complete uh, its execution possibly blocking obstructing others but since we don't use locks uh, it's still uh, much better than deadlock free implementations uh, like uh, lazy or uh, optimistic and it's also weight free for contains the implementation is uh, well we, we pursued it uh, gradually but you may notice that the resulting implementation is possibly quite non-trivial proving correctness of such implementation might be challenging. So it requires some expertise in understanding what's going on, and in particular, showing that the uh, resulting implementation is linearizable, meaning that every operation appears as taking effect instantaneously in its interval, maybe not easy. Okay, so another, another problem which is actually shared with uh, blocking, log-based implementations, is that uh, this kind of algorithms do not compose in the sense that if you want to have uh, atomic operations dealing with multiple sets, for example, I want to have two sets and uh, I want uh, an operation which removes an element from one set and adds an, ele uh, an element to the other set appearing as one atomic step, uh, I won't be able to do it easily. Well, at least I will have to invest as, as much effort in, in designing such an uh, atomic uh, transfer operation as in uh, designing uh, add remove and contains operations on the on the on a single set and besides as we might have noticed this uh, these algorithms are, on, are not easy to devise achieve ease of programming which is not there when we talk about uh, well non blocking or blocking implementations of uh, data structures that we discussed so far and uh, positionality and to some extent efficiency using efficiently con the concurrency features of the modern hardware so the uh, paradigm of uh, transactional memory was proposed in transactional memory we can simply take a sequential implementation of add remove and contains which is uh, presumably easier to devise than the, uh, the concurrent implementations of these operations we can simply have it in red and simply mark them as atomic transactions with uh, well-defined all or nothing guarantees and let the transactional memory resolve all the conflicts among concurrent operations. And the idea is now we don't uh, even care about underlying data conflicts. We can devise our programs and work with uh, concurrent data structures as though they are sequential. And well, the only concern here is efficiency. And it's still a topic of ongoing research whether we can actually render transactional memory efficient. So synchronization is not about doing some useful work, but about resolving conflicts, making sure that the uh, data races would not violate the consistency properties of your programs. We discussed blocking synchronizations from coarse-grained blocking that simply protects the whole data structures from concurrent accesses and uh, does not exploit uh, hardware concurrency at all, to lazy synchronization that actually allows some operations on the data structures to proceed uh, weight-free, and some of them in a blocking way. And then we also discussed non-blocking operations, non-blocking implementations of data structures. Some operations succeed, or well, maybe better to say complete, without waiting for the others. And uh, we also discussed briefly the transactional memory approach. Also describe, we discussed briefly the approach which is based on transactional memory and uh, this is a topic in itself and uh, I will refer to other literature and videos 